They both are absolutely have a strong conviction to do what mom and dad wanted. The problem is they both have different perspectives of what mom and dad wanted. Who's right, who's wrong? Doesn't matter. By that time, the fight's blown up and we're off to the races. So what we want to do is we want to set the instructions in place so we don't have to worry about it. We know what mom and dad want because the instructions are attached to the power of attorney. Does that make sense? All right. So that's who's in control of you and your stuff. Now, who has access? Well, again, if you don't have planning in place, the state of New York has a set of rules on that. And they say who has access. In fact, they get to a point who's in control of all of your stuff if you haven't. And they'll usually appoint someone you may have never even met or know. It may even be some lawyer. There's special courses I can go take to be one of those people appointed. Okay? Now, it could be your family member, but everything they do will be at who? Under the guidance of the court. You get the idea that that's sticky and mucky, right? So the question we're going to really be talking about, who's in control at that point? You or the state? The state, right? Through the court system. So again, what we want to do is we want, again, losing control happens very quickly when proper planning is not in place. So what's proper planning? You've got to have a good health care proxy, a good health care directive, a living will type situation. We, have to, we actually even recommend a personal care plan, which is a three to five page document that says, hey, if I'm incapacitated, I want to stay home. I don't want to go to nursing home. If I can't stay home anymore, wherever you put me, maximize my independence. I want to be dressed and groomed daily. I want my oral hygiene maintained. I want my hair done once a month. I'd like to go outside at least two times a day for 30 minutes. Here's what I want to eat. Make sure I get a nice uh, beer, cold beer with dinner. Make sure I get to visit family on regular occasions as long as I'm presentable and I'm not a burden. I'd like to do crocheting. Please make sure I have access to that. I love golfing. Please take me out to golf courses, fishing, hunting. Whatever your world looks like, we build that plan. Now, does that mean we're going to take you out two times a day for 30 minutes in the middle of a snowstorm? Absolutely not. It's a guideline for you and your loved ones, and we could even integrate that in with your instructions so that the people in control of your money could actually ensure that that actually occurs. Because we know nursing homes aren't going to do that. They're not set up to do that. But you can be set up to do that with an integrated plan. Or you can keep simple plans either way. So again, it's who's in control. So we got all this set. This is all great when you're alive. But what happens when you die? Now who's in control? Well, here's the question I have for you. Do you need a will or do you need a trust? What have you heard on the street? So you guys both asked, what's a will? What's a trust? What have you heard on the street? What do you need? Everybody says you need a will, so that's good. Has anyone heard anything different? Some people say you heard you need a trust. OK, so far I haven't heard the right answer. but. Oh, a will and a trust. What were you saying? <laughs> a trust is so involved. Complicated. Who wants to get involved with all that? Right. Real valid points, right? So you say, on the other side of the wall, yeah. Well, we do trust and we do wills. We do it all. We, you know, we're not a one size fits all. But the beauty is, look at all the conversations. I still haven't heard the right answer. So you said both. Still haven't heard the right answer because you know what the right answer is? It doesn't matter because neither one works.